Today I am going to show you how to make this crazy element, which glows in the dark when exposed to air, likes to light and fire all on its own and besides that is exceedingly toxic. As you might have already guessed, I am talking about white phosphorus. But before continuing to show you how to make it, do not try this at home, I am a professional and this is very dangerous. You have likely never seen it on YouTube before, but I am going to make extremely clean white phosphorus and for this we are going to need red phosphorus as a starting material. About 40 grams of this hard to get chemical were weighed out in a round bottom flask. This simple apparatus was set up. It consisted of an argon filled balloon, two round bottom flasks, one containing our red phosphorus and a vacuum pump. The joints have been greased very well before doing this. The flasks were evacuated, followed by flushing with argon and this cycle was repeated four times. Here you can have a closer look at our beautiful apparatus. All you need to do to convert red phosphorus to white phosphorus is to heat it up using a Bunsen burner. The red allotrope will simply convert to the white allotrope which will boil over. To ensure pressure equalization without air entering the apparatus, the stop valve connected to the arc balloon must be opened before starting the heating process. It would be possible not to flush with argon beforehand, but phosphorus will react with air and it might become dangerous. It would also lower the yield, so we decided to use argon instead. The sand bath didn't get hot enough for white phosphorus to start forming. Therefore the round button flask was exposed directly to the flame of the Bunsen burner. It did not take long until you were able to see the first vapors of highly toxic white phosphorus. When contaminated with red phosphorus, white phosphorus has a slight yellow color which you can see here. These droplets of white phosphorus are extremely terrifying. White phosphorus is about as toxic as potassium cyanides, but dying from it would be even more painful. White phosphorus will basically settle in your jaw bones, leading to necrosis and something called fossy jaw. Biphosphonates are formed in the jaw and this is slowly going to spread, leading to necrosis of the jaw within 6 months. I could now show you some horrible pictures, but YouTube wouldn't like it. If the jaw isn't removed, it's going to be deadly and the jaw might even glow because of the phosphorus. I hope I scared you enough that you refrain from making white phosphorus yourself. Once finished, I used the Bunsen burner and a heat gun to get everything down into the flask and then melted the rest using a bucket of hot water. In order to continue, we must cover the white phosphorus using distilled water. Water was injected while the flask was cooling down and was therefore sucked in. All parts of the apparatus which weren't needed anymore were decontaminated over the course of a few weeks using a certified sodium hypochlorite solution which makes chlorine water. Our white phosphorus looks more yellow than white. Therefore we need to do a washing step using chromic acid. For making dilute chromic acid, we only had to dissolve a small amount of chromium trioxide in distilled water. At this point we are not only dealing with highly toxic white phosphorus, but also with carcinogenic chromic acid. The solution of chromic acid should be somewhat dilute and therefore I added even more distilled water to the white phosphorus. A small portion of the chromic acid was added and heating and stirring were turned on. Stirring was turned up to the max, but we only set the water temperature to about 60 degrees Celsius as white phosphorus already melts at 44 degrees C. I discovered that there was some white phosphorus on the stopper and decided to show it to you. When exposed to light, white phosphorus will slowly decompose back to red phosphorus and as we want really pure stuff, I wrapped the apparatus in aluminium foil. This was likely totally unnecessary, but after it got dark outside, I worked under red light because I thought it might be less harsh on the phosphorus. The molten white phosphorus was stirred for about 9 hours while gradually adding fresh chromic acid. I could and maybe I should have, but if I stirred it for longer I would have been able to get a purer product, but I wanted to see some progress and I decided to stop. While molten, the white phosphorus was transferred to another beaker containing distilled water. Keep in mind that the syringe might ignite at any moment, splattering molten fire onto my hands. The contaminated water from the beaker was disposed of appropriately and the white phosphorus was washed multiple times using distilled water. And there you have it, a big chunk of highly toxic white phosphorus, which is cleaner than anything I've seen on YouTube before. For better handling and for aesthetic reasons, I wanted to have my white phosphorus in the form of some sticks and therefore the molten white phosphorus was sucked up into some syringes and put into a glass of water to solidify. Unfortunately I did not film it, but the white phosphorus was actually clear while molten. As I did not want to continue today, the syringes were cut off, the glass was closed and put into a safe place. This is white phosphorus, which is not ultra pure. I decided to burn it to demonstrate it to you. 
As you could see, it ignited easily. If you let it sit for long enough, it might even ignite on its own. All of that smoke you see is phosphorus pentoxide, which is later on turned into phosphoric acid. Stuff you wouldn't want to inhale. I unfortunately couldn't film it because the glow was too dim, but while filling the syringes with molten white phosphorus, my gloves actually began to glow slightly green and I exchanged them multiple times, because this is no fun. And there you go, you can have a look at our white phosphorus. The next day I decided to remove it from the syringes by using another water-filled syringe to push it out. As you could see, this ended up being harder than I thought it would be. I decontaminated the bottle before touching it, but in the end we are left with these beautiful rods. We began with 40 grams of red phosphorus and ended with about 30 grams of white phosphorus. I could have made it even purer, but I was too lazy and maybe I'll purify it even more next time. As white phosphorus can self-ignite, the glass bottle was packed into a secondary container, just in case if it broke. Before showing you awesome experiments with our product, I would like to thank today's sponsor Brilliant. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn about science, but also math and even computer science. On Brilliant you can find a ton of interactive online courses, which will help you learn fast while being fun and engaging. You don't need to go to college to acquire basic college level understanding of all of this. Even if you don't have to do anything with science, learning about STEM fields helps you in everyday life. I myself spent a few hours learning on Brilliant and now I'm finally able to comprehend quantum mechanics. They offer thousands of lessons with new ones added every month. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash thylabs or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you who sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now that I've shown you how to make white phosphorus, you obviously want to see a few experiments with it. For the first one, we need to dissolve it in hexane. Because I didn't want to waste an entire stick of white phosphorus, I cut off a small piece of it underwater. This piece was cut up another time and about half of the small pieces were added to the hexane. When holding the speaker above a light source, you can see that our white phosphorus is quite pure because you can see through it. We put the solution onto a paper tissue and waited, but unfortunately it did not want to self-ignite, so I had to help it out and we need to try this again. As you might know, phosphorus glows when exposed to air. Unfortunately, my camera is not good enough to capture this, but using a small trick and doing a screen recording of my photo camera, I was able to capture this amazing footage. In real life, the phosphorus actually glows even brighter than you would think. Where the phosphorus was glowing, I noticed a strong ozone smell, which we are going to investigate in a few seconds. For the phosphorus to glow brightly, it actually needs to be warm enough. I have tried this yesterday when the phosphorus had a temperature of about 5 degrees celsius and it did not glow at all. To test for the ozone, we are going to use potassium iodide starch paper. I placed a wet potassium iodide starch paper on the wall of the beaker, placed a small piece of white phosphorus in a crystallizing dish. If ozone is generated, the potassium iodide will be oxidized to iodine and with the starch it forms a purple complex. I also placed a small amount of water in the beaker to keep the air from exchanging too much. I had to wait for about an hour because it's really cold outside, but in the end we were left with this purple color. Ozone is generated because the phosphorus does not only react with an entire oxygen molecule consisting of two oxygen atoms, but sometimes rips off one oxygen atom, which in return reacts with an oxygen molecule to form ozone. I've now shown you a few reactions with phosphorus. But what if you were poisoned by it? What did they do in the past to test for phosphorus poisoning? Today there are much better methods, but in the past they used this very simple apparatus. Whatever substance you wanted to test for the presence of white phosphorus was placed into a flask containing a small amount of water and a long tube was placed on top of it. This method works for even the smallest amount of white phosphorus. You have to bring the water or the substance to a boil and have to observe while dimming down the lights. The moment the water was hot enough, we were already able to see the white smoke which was forming in this part of the apparatus. I boiled for a few more minutes and the smoke disappeared. I turned off the lights and when you look closely, you are able to see something that resembles a flame. 
This is why it phosphorus being oxidized, but it's actually not burning because this thing is not able to light a piece of paper on fire. Using my camera trick, I was able to capture even better footage. And there you go, now you know how they tested for the presence of white phosphorus in the past. You could simply place some contaminated stomach content into the flask, followed by boiling, and if there's white phosphorus present, you would see the same flame. When reacted with magnesium powder, magnesium phosphide is formed. Magnesium phosphide releases highly toxic phosphine gas in contact with water. Small traces of diphosphane are also formed and these can self-ignite. Because of its immense toxicity, phosphine gas is used to kill insects and rodents and therefore you should not make this at home. If you want me to try a specific reaction using white phosphorus, let me know down in the comments and I'll try my best. I hope you enjoyed today's video. What you see on screen right now is a list of videos which I am still filming or planning to film. Also a huge thanks goes out to all of my Patreons. From now on I will be adding these Patreon lists to the end of my videos because I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.